See now, if only the 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 Muppets would call me up, I would do a a book in two seconds. If you only knew, who do you think taught me to read? It wasn't my family. <laughs> Sorry, mom. Why, hello, everybody. Welcome to class. This is the pop-up master class, and that's me. Well, that's me, uh, Matthew Reinhardt. Hello. Today, we're going to work on something called a V-fold riser, okay? And so it's a V-fold, but what actually it is, it's actually two Vs that are the same angle on the top and the bottom. And that V-fold, when it's attached to the page, they'll work in tandem together. And we're going to use two um, V-shaped pieces of paper and in tandem and they will move a platform either upwards or downwards on the page. Let me show you a book that uses V-fold risers a lot. Um, so, ooh, yikes, look at this guy. Okay, so this T-Rex. All right, everyone asks me, you know, how did you make that happen? There are these V-folds in there and, and they're pushing actually the head, the neck downward um, of the T-Rex. The and then there's this layer here and it's kind of, I like to call it like a platform. So it's kind of a platform that works on top of two twin V-fold risers, those V-folds underneath there. But anyways, the way that works, it's there's two V-folds working in tandem to move that platform downward like that. Okay, I'm gonna use, uh, for, my, for my base page, I'm gonna use some white cardstock. And as usual, we're gonna make a hamburger fold. And just to show you better, there we go, that's my center line. And I'm gonna use some um, colored uh, cardstock just to show you so that you can see it better on the page, all right? You know, I cheat a lot. I, I, I hope I can show you guys some good ways to sort of cheat and make things um, easier for yourself. We're going to make a V-fold that's 90 degrees. Now I'm just gonna use this corner here and I'm gonna, um, just cut off a corner just like that. You can see that I did that before with some of my scrap. Anyways, uh, so it's a V. So now I'm gonna fold that little corner in half. See how I've lined that up along that edge? Just like so. So that's, that's a V, all right? Um, now the next step is gonna be a little difficult. So that's why, let's bring out our ruler. I want you to fold your V in half like this. See this flat line here? This is, this is the fold and this is the, the cut side, see? I'm going to just mark it so I can see. Okay, close it. And I'm going to mark, I don't know. Now it doesn't have to be this distance. I just want you to make sure we have to make, see, see this, this, this edge here? We have to make another cut that is a line here um, uh, that will be cut. We have to make another uh, a line that will be cut later on uh, that is parallel. So parallel means that two lines never, never, they, they never uh, intersect. You know, that they're, they're exactly the same like this. Oops, I should put them. We need to make a parallel line from this bottom edge. And it doesn't matter how tall you make it. I'm just gonna choose two inches. So see, I made a little mark just like that. I'm going to make a second mark. So that way I know it's definitely right. There, now I know that this line and this edge are parallel. Remember, parallel. This is perpendicular. This is parallel. Took me a while to get that. I'm gonna cut a along that line and so now we have sort of a V-shaped, this is the bottom V-fold. And if you'll notice, this angle here at the top is the same as the angle on the bottom. I'm going to even it out and make it symmetrical. See, I just folded it in half and snipped it right like that. So now we have one V-fold for our V-fold riser. So we have one of our V-folds that we're going to use in our V-fold riser. I wanna make a second one. And one of the ways that I like to do that is something called trace cutting because I'm really lazy. And what I like to do is I lay one piece on top of another piece of cardstock just like this and cut along the edges of this piece 
Or if that's a little difficult, I'm gonna just trace it with my pencil very lightly, just like that. I'm gonna very carefully follow along those lines because we need two, at least two of these Vs to make our V-fold riser work. This, I, I use this so often, I don't even think about it anymore. Now, most of the time when I'm making these, um, I, don't, I, I modify the Vs um, in different ways to make them do what I want to do. But first, it's important to learn it this way where you use two that are exactly the same like this. So what do we do to this one? We fold it in exactly the same way as our first one. All right, so there's two. They're identical. They're twins. We're going to use two of these things and we're going to tape them onto our page so we can see how they work. So let's put, what we're going to do is we're going to tape both of these onto the page. We're not going to tape it up there. We're going to tape it down on this long edge, down on the base page. And I'm going to line up my center fold of this V with the center fold of the base page. You know, like, yeah, something like that. I'm going to just use scotch tape, one-sided tape, and I'm going to tape it along this entire edge. Make sure that that point is on the center fold. And also when you're doing this, make sure you get a lot of tape going all the way up and down here. Don't get it over this edge and don't get it over at the edge going this way. Now we're going to tape it along this edge, but you don't want your tape from this side going over there. Actually, I've had some really good students when I, when I used to teach at university and I would have students who would make pop-ups and because they were so messy, the pop-ups would actually pop off the page and never come back onto the page. It was such a mess. It was like hair and popcorn all sticking out of there. And that's why I'm always saying, make sure that there's no sticky side up and you know, make sure it's neat. All right, so I've got tape going along this edge and this edge. And now you can see how that V moves. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tape this twin just a little bit below it. Now it doesn't matter if you go over it. I'm gonna do it like this and make sure it's along the center fold line. And where do we tape it? Do we tape it on the top or do we tape it on the bottom? If you said top, you're wrong. It's along this bottom. Because we, we want these two to move together. It's kind of like synchronized swimming. All right, so I'm gonna tape it along this edge, just like before. So now when we watch this, see? Both V's move together in tandem. All right, now that we've got this part of the pop-up built, we need to make another piece. It doesn't matter what size it is. I'm going to um, make a square for now, or rather a rectangle. Um, and I'm going to fold it in half. Very carefully do that to just show us where the center is. All right, what we're gonna do is we are going to add this piece on top so that when it when we open and close our pop-up that thing will go up and down okay next let's get some one-sided tape okay so I'm using scotch tape I'm going to tape it on the underside sticky side up just like that and if it goes over the center fold like that you can just use a pair of scissors and I'm going to do that just on this side I'm gonna tape it just like that, sticky side up. First, I'm gonna do one side only, and our center fold is right there, so I'm gonna fold it in half. I'm gonna line it up with the center fold right here, and I'll press down. Let's look at it now, look. Look at that, it's moving, when we open it, it's moving upwards. It starts off when it's closed, right there, but when it opens, it's all the way up here. See how it's moving? Because they're moving together at the same time and at the same angle. It's really great because it makes something really tall on the page. We have to add tape here and here and fold this over. I'm going to tape it there, there, sticky side up, sticky side up, open it up, press it down. Okay, so it opens up, whoa, look at that. So that's why it's called a V-fold riser because it's built on these V-folds but it rises upward. You know, it's important to always look at things in different ways. If we turned it upside down, it'd be a V-fold lowerer, but the fact that just doesn't sound good. But it's essentially the same thing, you know, it's getting, it's getting our, our platform to move and rise to a certain direction. One of the things I wanted to show you, class, this is very interesting, um, well, I think it is. Uh, this platform, actually mimics the base page. 
So watch, see how the base page closes? So does the platform. Whoa, cool, I'm so excited. So we can build something on top of this and then, then we can really start making some cool stuff. If you were really crazy, you know that every fold when you're making a pop-up, you know, whatever fold is made, that fold, that fold, that fold, all those places are opportunities for you to build more mechanisms. Now, the more complicated you get, you know, a bit more complicated mechanisms, it's gonna be harder the further away you get from this center line. You could build a miniature default riser going this way if you wanted. You could build another default riser going downwards so that the pop and have another platform on top of it so that the platform was going down and the, the big one was going up. But I think I'm just gonna make something out of uh, this to show you what we can do. Okay, I have an idea. Now all this yellow, you have to understand, I'm a child of the 70s and early 80s. So when I see yellow and orange, I, do you know what I think? I think Big Bird. Now, I've never been able to do a Sesame Street pop-up, and so now is the time. I see this as Big Bird's body. Maybe I'll have his head come up here. Maybe I'll have put his arms over there. With his legs, I'll figure something out. So oh, I'm only gonna use what we've learned so far. So that means layers and just simple V-folds on this pop, okay? Hmm, I'm going to make two V-folds. I just cut that off a corner. So I'm gonna make two of these little V-folds. I'm, I'm gonna mark the center line just so we can see it better. All right, so there's one. The reason why I like Big Bird so much, he was it back in, in when I was young. So I really love the character a lot. I think I'm gonna do him this way. Here. Here. See that fold line right there? See, it created a fold line, so that's an opportunity for me. So I'm going to line it up. And let's see. <laughs> There's a big bird leg. When I'm taping a surface to a surface, I use double-sided tape. All right, look, okay. And we got one leg going for big bird. Let's do the same thing on the other side. I'm gonna do it a little different. So I taped it here and here, and I'm gonna make it kind of look like Big Bird's like doing a dance. Look at that, doo doo doo, yeah, I love that. So next, I'm going to make sort of an oval shape that's a little bit wider than these edges. That's kind of cool, that works. Okay, so I'm gonna fold it in half, and it's a little off. You know the guy who plays um, Big Bird, or who, who, are, who first played Big Bird, his name is Carol Spinney. He is so cool, he's my idol. We're gonna lay it over this, and it's going to push out like a layer. We're gonna make a, a layer bridge kind of over this. But you know, you'll notice that that's rounded there. That's, how's that gonna attach to that? Well, here's how we're gonna do it. I'm gonna take some one-sided tape, sticky side up. What we're doing is, rather than taping surface to surface, we're actually making a folding hinge, okay? So it's sticky there, sticky there. And this oval that's been folded in half, I'm going to line it up with the center just like that. You see, it taped down underneath it, and it made that hinge. All right, so now we need a head and maybe some arms too. I think a little rectangle like this, I'm gonna fold it in half, and I'm going to cut a little big bird hand. There's two of them. Just gonna put a little double stick on the bottom and tape it. I'm gonna do something tricky. Because I've got these V-folds back here, I think I'm going to use them to make Big Bird's head. And, I, and the only trouble is there's a little tape that's holding this piece to the V-fold the risers. So I'm not gonna cut all of it, but I'm gonna cut a little slit along some of that. See how I'm doing that? Because you know what's cool? Even though that V-fold's underneath it, we could, we could stick a piece of paper through there, and it could move with the V-fold. So I'm gonna use a piece of um, uh, scrap paper with double stick, because it's gonna be surface to surface. I'm gonna make a little skinnier. Okay, so I'm gonna stick it through there. And it's actually gonna tape to this V. So now, see how it moves? It moves with this V. 
and it actually goes through this this plane. Now I think it's time to add Big Bird's neck. And I'm going to use a little double stick here because it's going to be surface to surface. I did not know I was going to make a, a pop-up this big today. So even though our pop-up is sticking out, actually it's kind of nice for you to be able to see this. You can actually see where his head goes when it closes. It, it slides down into this area. It's important when you're making your pop-up to see where things go because sometimes things don't work right and you want to be able to analyze it and see. All right, so we've got the outer part of Big Bird and now I think we need to make some additions. He needs, of course, a beak. All right, now it's time to do a little bit of decorating. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I told you that I don't think I would know how to read without public television. When I was young, it was like all we had. We didn't have Cartoon Network. Now you get to hear an old person go like, I remember back when I was young, we didn't have TV. Well, we had TV, but we didn't have a lot of different channels. All we had was public television in the morning and I would watch Sesame Street and Electric Company and Mr. Rogers and Zoom. I mean, when I was really desperate, I would watch Zoom because that was kind of boring. And you know, it, after a while, Nickelodeon did come along and I did like Pinwheel, that was, that was amusing. But um, I was probably too old to watch that, but I did it anyways. I used to watch Sesame Street and it was so weird to me to see people living in the city, because I didn't live in the city, I lived more in the suburbs. And here I am as a grown up, and I've lived in the city in New York, New York since I was in my 20s. And I'm, I'm just a little bit older than that now. <laughs> cool, look at that awesome Big Bird pop-up. Hey everybody, welcome to Sesame Street. Um, you know, and when we have like something like this where it's sticking out, this is how I cheat. I'm going to just make a bigger cover. And I'm putting double stick in the corners so that we can make a new cover. And again, all right, there he is, our Big Bird pop-up, look at that. All right, class, you did it. All right, this is a V full riser and we're all gonna be rising up or maybe sometimes we'll be going down, but we'll be using those two twin V folds that work together to push up a platform and we'll build more onto it using what we've learned. So this is Matthew Reinhardt saying, very good class. I, wanna, I expect to see all of your work. I hope you students have enjoyed this week's pop-up masterclass learning a V-fold riser. Say goodbye, Big Bird. Goodbye, Big Bird. <laughs>